guys, welcome back to my channel and another video here. Before we get into the topic of today's video, I just want to preface this with, if I look like I've been sweating, it's because I've been sweating. I decided that I really wanted to make bagels, which I've never done. I don't know. I've never made bagels before. I have made bread like twice in my life, so I don't know what I was thinking, but I made bagels and they look a little lumpy. I don't know how they taste yet. I, I was like, I got to film this video and then I'm going to make a bagel sandwich. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But I don't know. A bagels, not, the, I was like, why don't more people make bread at home? It's like three ingredients. It's so easy. I forgot that you have to knead the bread for like 80 years. So I don't know. So today's video is not about bagels. It's about nails. And uh, this is about my current worst nail habits and how I'm trying to break them. Everybody knows that bad habits are really hard to break and it's really hard to form new good habits, but I always like to try. I, I heard once it takes like 20 or 21 days or something like that to form a new habit. And let me tell you, I took that to heart and I forced myself to try to track habits and things like that, that I want to become integrated into my everyday life. So things like drinking enough water or exercising or just something as simple as, you know, daily reading and things like that. I track those habits until it becomes kind of annoying to track it because I'm so used to doing it. It's already part of my life. And this, I, these all need to be habits that I need to be tracking or more on top of. Some of these bad habits kind of feed into each other for my nails. You know, they're kind of interwoven and you'll see that as I go through them. And some of them are way more recently developed. Like these were habits that I had either never really done or I had broken out of. And then for whatever reason, just in the past month to month and a half, I've fallen back into them. And I think the big reason why is one, I was feeling like garbage and two, I had a really bad nail break. I broke my pointer and my thumb on a door. And the state of my nails, it, they don't look the best. And so I just, you know, when something already looks bad and you're like, well, now I just definitely don't care. I think that's kind of how I was feeling. And so I just kind of let a lot of my bad habits take back over my nail life. But I want to get my nails back to looking nice again and healthier and things like that. So here are the five biggest things that I'm up against right now. Number one is peeling my nails. Not peeling nails, but me physically peeling at my own nails. When they start to peel, it's really tempting to just finish it. Just keep on peeling. I have been like a picker since I was a kid. Like I have scars all over because I just, as a kid, I couldn't let things go. Like I was always picking at it and things and it would drive my parents nuts. And they'd be like, do you want to be covered in scars? And I'd be like, I don't care. And you know what? I can say that as a 30 year old, I don't care. I don't care about all these scars, but I do care about my nails <laughs> and picking and peeling at your nails is really bad for them. It thins them out and makes them so much more susceptible to bends and breaks. And if my nails are already peeling, you know, they're already getting kind of weaker and I don't want to weaken them even more and just kind of fall into this endless cycle of peeling and breaking and peeling and breaking and just being like, ah, but when my nails start to peel up, it takes an overwhelming amount of strength on my part to not just take it off, just keep it going. You know what I mean? Like it, it's really hard for me. So usually what I do to combat that is I just don't, not have anything on my nails, but we'll talk about that in a couple of bad habits. Lately, what I've been doing is I bought the Orly Protein Boost and I've been applying that to my nails and it creates this kind of barrier and it's supposed to help with the strength of your nails and things like that. I'm not sure, I'm not a scientist, I'm not gonna make any kind of claims, but it does kind of help keep all of the peely bits of my nails down if I'm not ready to put polish on them yet. So that's what I've been doing. It's kind of different than a base coat because I find base coats get a little tacky when they dry down. And putting a top coat on my nails uh, without polish under it feels weird to me because it's like, I don't want a glossy plain nail, right? So that Orly Protein Boost, it, it kind of is like a subtle, not, it's like a semi matte or demi matte or something like that. And it kind of looks like your natural nail. So I've been using that and that's been helping. 
Um, but I, I still have very peeling nails right now. So I've still got a lot of work to do. Bad habit number two is not oiling enough. I fell off of oiling my nails hard recently. Like, like I said, in the past month to month and a half, I just have not oiled my nails regularly. And my cuticles are crying because of it. Like they are dry and they just, they don't look good. And part of the reason is like, sometimes I'm like really uptight about oiling because I'm like, oh, I have to film, I have to film. And I don't want my nails and my cuticles to look super dry on camera. I mean, half the time they still kind of did, but I would, I was way more hyper aware when I was filming a couple times a week or once a week, multiple videos. But in April, I'm sure you guys noticed there was a few missing slots and it just, I had fallen behind. And so I didn't feel that constant nag to be like, oil your nails, oil your nails. I just wasn't doing it. That plus, I feel like I've been out and about a lot more. Like I've had to go out of town a couple times last month and I just, wasn't carrying something with me and it just it just was really on the back burner. My cuticle buddies are all empty except for one and so I don't have them like strategically placed around my apartment and things like that right now. I need to refill them but I want to get them all empty and then refill them all at once so that's why I haven't done that. But recently I did realize I have about a million nail pens that I've gotten one way or another. So I stashed those around my apartment. I have one by my computer. I have one by my seat in the living room. I keep my cuticle, the one cuticle buddy that's full. I keep that in my bag that I take to work. And then I have a nail oil pen in my bedside table type thing. Actually, it's like the headboard has shelves built into it. And so I keep it in one of the headboard shelves. We don't have bedside tables. That was really important information for you guys. I'm sorry. That has been helping because, you know, keeping them in my high traffic areas, if I like look over and I see it there, I'm like, oh yeah, oil your dang nails, Hillary. And so that's what I've been doing. I was on the verge of setting reminder alarms on my phone every like couple of hours as a reminder to oil my cuticles. So I'm glad it didn't get to that point. But um, yeah, my nails are still, even though I oiled them quite a bit this week, so far, uh, they're still really dry. So they are in like full recovery mode right now. Bad habit number three is bare nails, not having anything on my nails. That's one of the first things I tell people when they're trying to grow their nails out is always keep polish on your nails because it acts as like an extra barrier. It keeps them a little bit more protected, gives them a little bit more strength. And here I am breaking my number one rule. In April, I spent like 60% of the month with nothing on my nails, which is very unlike me. I feel some type of way about people seeing my bare nails because as much as I don't think that people are actually judging me because who's like looking at that? At the same time, I'm like, oh, they're really stained and people are gonna look at them and be like, ew, she's gross. And some people get freaked out by like bare nails not covered in polish and like think that it looks kind of um, unkempt. Even if like I shape my nails, my nails are very well kept typically. Uh, I just feel like even when they are nicely shaped and things like that, people look at them and think like, oh, they're like not taking care of themselves because they're not cutting their nails. So I just like to keep polish on them typically. But I had lost just all motivation to paint my nails, which I can say it is back. The, the actual reason my nails are bare right now is because I was swatching and I haven't put on my manicure yet. My like official what I'm going to wear for the rest of the day kind of mani. Uh, so like they're not going to be bare for that long. I just had to film this first. This one I would say is probably fixed. I guess it's kind of early in the month to say, but I think that it is fixed. I feel like my motivation is back. I had like just kind of like a mental health thing, which I talk about in another video, but I just got medicated and that fixed it. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying everybody go get medicated when you don't want to pay your nails, but that's what worked for me. So I just feel so much better. And now I want to wear all my beautiful polishes again and yeah, that's that. I'm excited about nail polish again. Number four, my bad nail habit is using my nails as tools. I heard cork manicures say a few times in videos, nails are jewels, not tools. And I love that saying. I don't know where she got it or if she made it of herself or whatever, but I just thought it was really funny. And it rhymes. Uh, but lately I've been really towing the line on that one. 
been using them to break tape on packages when I didn't want to go grab scissors. Uh, I've been using them to lift the tabs on cans to open the can kind of that sort of thing. And that can create like little cracks or you can just break it right on the item. Like it's not a safe way to do things if you care about the length and strength and look of your nails, which I do, but apparently not enough because I've been using my nails as tools. But ultimately I just need to remind myself to have patience. Um, you got a package, Hillary, you don't have to open it on the threshold of your door. You can enter your home and walk into your office and get a pair of scissors and cut it open, like something like that. Or you're already in the kitchen getting your can of sparkling, bubbly, refreshing blueberry pomegranate seltzer water, um, which I did open this with my nails, oh my God. But if it's like I'm already in the kitchen getting my drink, I keep my, can, what are they called? Can mates? They're like these cool little things that you can use to open your cans. Uh, I keep those in there. I also have spoons. I could open it with a spoon. Um, I'm already in there. Why? Like just turn around to the drawer that has the silverware and pull them out. But I didn't. So I just need to be more patient and actually just like walk to the room that has the thing, the tool that I need. It takes like five extra seconds. And the last bad habit, number five is water. And it's not about drinking water, although like I think drinking water probably helps your nails. Like I said, not a scientist. Uh, it's overwatering my nails. And what I mean by that is like, okay, one, in, environmentalists don't come for me. I love a long shower. I love a long, hot shower. And my nails are getting soaked and stuffed to the brim with water when I take those long showers. I wash my hands a ton because uh, like, that's what you're supposed to do. I don't know. And so my hands are getting wet from that. And then because I'm a little bit high maintenance, I have a lot of dishware that cannot or should not go in the dishwasher. And my boyfriend used to wash all of that stuff for me, but he works long hours now. And so that just like, if I don't do it, when like I want it to be done, it might take a week before it gets done. And so like, that's not his fault. He's working and like bringing home money. So I'm not like faulting him for that. It's just like, if I want it done on my timetable, I have to do it on my timetable. And so I've been washing, this is going to sound so stupid. I've been washing my own dishes. I've been washing, they're like tea mugs. They're just like nice mugs for my tea. And I've been washing those myself. Whereas he used to do that for me. And, um, I don't have dishwashing gloves because a lot of dishwashing gloves have latex in them. And I'm allergic to latex and I just am afraid to buy some that will just cause an, a, a, a glove shaped rash on my arms. Like that's the last thing I need in my life. So yeah, I just wash my dishes barehanded because I'm living on the edge and I shouldn't do that, but I have been doing that. So in order to combat that, I have one been trying not to take crazy long showers. That's fine. It's easy to cut out. Like in the, if I shower in the morning, I like before work, it's, I only have 10 minutes to shower or less anyways, because I really like to cut it close with my getting ready time. It's just one of the things I really enjoy about my life. And if I shower in the evening, it's usually I come home and I've worked out and I'm already like hot from working out. So I don't want to take a super long shower. So that's fine. I've really mitigated that one. The hand washing thing, you can't really do anything about that. I've just got to wash my hands. Maybe some people would be like, oh, use hand sanitizer. I don't like using hand sanitizer too much more than I have to because it dries my hands out and I don't like the feeling. So it's like, I feel like that's just going to have the same effect on my nails as too much water would, you know, so I'm not going to do that. I'll just keep washing my hands the normal amount. And then I just need to get dishwashing gloves. I just need to do it. I, I'll i find some. It's just every time I look at the package, it says contains latex rubber. And I'm like, eh, probably not. Probably not those. I had some before and they were latex free and I used those for a really long time. But then they got weird. Like the, the rubber hardened. I don't know. It was It was strange. And then they started to crack. And so I had to throw those away. And I don't remember where I got them. So I don't know where to get more. But yeah, those are my five really bad nail habits that I have right now. Um, I feel like I should not have five bad habits going all at the same time, 
just for my nails, but uh, it was a month. So we're gonna, we're gonna work on resolving those. And I feel like I've gotten a couple of them under control and we're just getting back on track. So let me know, do you guys have any really bad nail habits that you either have been trying to break or just can't break when it comes to either hand and nail care or even just painting your nails and things like that? Let me know down in the comments. And if you know where to get latex free, rubber gloves for washing your dishes let me know because i'm in the market for some and uh yeah that's gonna be it i will see you guys in the next one bye